हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल दैट इज़ नर्सिंग ट्रिक्स आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेल एंड इफ़ यू हैव नॉट सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल प्लीज़ डू सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल एंड हिट द बेल आइकन टू गेट द लेटेस्ट नोटिफिकेशन फ्रॉम माई चैनल मेजर ऑफ सेंट्रल टेंडेंसी विच इज योर मोड विच इज योर मोड नाउ मोड इज इन सिंपल टर्म्स इट इज़ द फ्रीक्वेंटली अकरिंग नंबर इन अ डेटा सो इफ आई हैव टू जस्ट राइट डाउन वट इज द फॉर्मूला और वट डू यू मीन बाई मोड इट इज़ अ फ्रीक्वेंटली इट इज़ अ फ्रीक्वेंटली अकरिंग नंबर फ्रीक्वेंटली अकरिंग नंबर इन अ इन अ डेटा सेट नाउ लेट एस जस्ट सी हाउ वी कैन कैलकुलेट the mode if you have the discrete frequency table given to you so for the discrete frequency table for the discrete frequency table how you can calculate let us just take an example if you have an example of 100 150 200 then 250 then 300 and then 350 and the frequencies are given Five, nineteen, three, eleven, six, and nine. So here you can see that you have given with the frequencies, and you have given with the x. So here you can see the maximum number or the maximum things uh, or the maximum numbers are with you can see are with the this. So this is the mode. So this is the mode that is z is equal to 150 here important thing to learn or to know is mode is denoted by z mode is denoted by z so here maximum frequency is of 150 that is 19 number of the students are having marks of 150 so the mode is 150 now important thing to know is that it uh, we have other like your uh, data set can be unimodal it can be bimodal it can be trimodal unimodal the word it word itself is saying unimodal having only one mode like 1 3 4 6 8 so in this and 9 and 9 so in this we have only one mode okay in then we have bi model in bi model we have for example 1 1 then 2 3 4 4 and 5 1 and 4 are mode z is equal to 9 here z is equal to 1 and 4 here and it can be tri model here same way 1 1 1 2 2 2 3 3 3 so one Two and three will be the mode here. So this way we have bimodal, unimodal, and trimodal. Okay, this is the way how you will calculate the the mode for a discrete frequency table. Now let us just see how we can calculate how we can calculate if we have if we have the if we have the continuous frequency table so let us just write down 100 150 150 150 to 200 and then 200 to 250 then 250 to 300 300 to 350 350 to 400 the frequencies are given like 5 19 3 11 6 and 9 now you have to find out the mode for it so here how i will find out let me just write down the formula first z is equal to l plus f minus f1 width upon 2f minus f1 minus f2 where l is your l is your lower limit l is your lower limit f is frequency of model class frequency of model class then your then your f1 f1 is your frequency of class before your 
बिफोर योर मॉडर्न क्लास मॉडल क्लास देन एफ टू इज फ्रिक्वेंसी ऑफ क्लास आफ्टर आफ्टर मॉडल क्लास ओके सो हियर यू कैन सी द मैक्सिमम मैक्सिमम नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स आर इन द क्लास इंटरवल ऑफ वन फिफ्टी टू टू हंड्रेड सो लेट मी जस्ट पुट इट इन इन दी फॉर्मूला जेड इज इक्वल टू द लोअर लिमिट ऑफ इट इज वन फिफ्टी प्लस एफ द फ्रिक्वेंसी ऑफ इट इज नाइनटीन एफ वन दैट इज बिफोर फाइव then upon टू into नाइनटीन minus फाइव f टू after that is थ्री width the width of it is वन फिफ्टी minus हंड्रेड is फिफ्टी so if you will just solve it you will get an answer of वन सेवेंटी थ्री पॉइंट फाइव फाइव वन सेवेंटी थ्री पॉइंट फाइव फाइव विच इज़ दी मोड ऑफ अ which is a mode of the this particular what is it is continuous frequency table so it is very easy to calculate that is the mode for the continuous frequency table now let us just see what are the merits and demerits of of having the mode as a mode as the central measure of central tendency so i will just write down the merit and the demerit of having the mode as a central tendency for having this merits it is not affected by the not affected by the extreme values you can take a value from 1 to 1 lakh but it will not be affected then it is not used to describe the it can be used to describe the can be used to describe the qualitative phenomena it can be used to describe the qualitative phenomena and values of mode can be determined uh, uh, again you can determine it graphically and the demerits are cannot always be determined every time you cannot determine the mode then second is it is not capable of algebraic manipulation you can't do any algebraic manipulation with it and also it is not based on each value the it is not based on the each value that you have okay so these are some of the merits and demerits you will see the merits and demerits in more detail once we will see the research once we will go through the research so in this video basically we are focusing more on how to calculate the mean median and mode so let me just sum up here all three which is the mean median and mode so that you can have a better understanding of what we have seen okay so let me just adjust it first okay now this is okay okay so the measure of central tendency what all things we have seen the measures of central tendency it means we want to find out that particular center value around which all the values are present or you can say are there okay so we have the three measures of central tendency that are the that are the mean median and the mode mean median and the mode in case if i have to just make this table here if you want want to find out if you want to find out for the discrete discrete data set simply your mean is this median is your m mode is your z okay for the discrete data set for the discrete data set here your this is sigma x upon sigma f okay and here we have two which is your if it is a odd one and if it is a even 
set of data this is n plus 1 by 2th observation and in the even you just have two middle values you have to take the sum of middle values and then you have to divide it by 2 ok for that you have to just see the maximum or you can the most repetitive number most repetitive repetitive number ok this is for the discrete data set and in case if you have discrete frequency table for the discrete frequency table this we have seen sigma xf upon sigma f where x is the midpoint midpoint ok here we have seen for the discrete data uh, discrete frequency table it is nothing but n plus 1 by 2th value ok but first of all you have to find out the cumulative frequency in this and then you can take this and then if you have for the discrete frequency table in case again the most repetitive value is the answer for it then if you have the continuous frequency continuous continuous frequency table with you for that what we have to do in the mean so again the mean is sigma xf upon then sigma xf upon sigma f sigma xf upon sigma x here x is your not midpoint it is the it is your simply you will just multiply it is not in this i am sorry it is here x is the midpoint here ok so next for the median how you will calculate you will calculate it as the m is equal to l plus n by 2 minus m width upon f and for this you will calculate it l plus f minus f1 upon width 2f minus f1 minus f2 so this is the table just to memorize that what are the formulas you can just copy this table as it is in order to have just a glimpse of the formulas so mean median mode mean is uh, denoted by x bar median is denoted by m mode is denoted by z for discrete data set for discrete frequency table and for the continuous frequency table we have different formulas in front of you so for the discrete data set the formula is sigma x upon sigma f in which sigma x you have to just sum up all the numbers in the data set and then you have to take the total number of the values in discrete frequency table mean is calculated as sigma xf simply you will take the discrete data set into the frequency and you will divide it by the total number of the frequency or sum up or sum of sum of all the frequencies in the continuous frequency table what you will do is you will have a x bar is equal to sigma xf upon so in continuous frequency table we have the x bar is equal to sigma xf where x is equal to midpoint and midpoint is calculated as let me just write it for you it is calculated as lower limit plus upper limit upon 2 this way you will calculate the midpoint upon sigma f then again you have to just sum up all the frequencies for the median again we have discrete data set we can have discrete frequency table we can have continuous frequency table if you have a odd set of disc odd discrete data set n by 1 upon 2th value will be your median value and for the even just sum up all middle values upon 2 for the discrete frequency table the median will be calculated first you have to find out the cumulative frequency then n plus 1 by 2th will be your median value for m in case of continuous frequency table this is the formula just remember this formula for the mode z is equal to z so for mo mode mode is uh, you can um, write down mode as z 
for mode if you have a discrete data set with you it is the most repetitive number again if you have discrete frequency table with you again it is most repetitive number and for the continuous frequency table the formula for the mode is z is equal to l plus f minus f1 and the so to calculate the z z is equal to l plus f minus f1 into width of the class interval upon 2f minus f1 minus f2 so this is the formula for the mode so if you have any doubt in any of the formula and how to calculate the measures of central tendency you can write down in the comment box and if you have not subscribed the channel do subscribe it and hit the bell icon so that you get the notification for my next upcoming video of the measures of the dispersion so thank you so 